I mean, suffice it to say, I, I tell all that to my confessor. I tell all that, all that to my spiritual director. So maybe suffice it to say, I can just tell y'all that I have found that the Christian life is not difficult. I have found that it is impossible. Hi, my name is Father Mike Schmitz, and this is Ascension Presents. So, ha. Huh. I grew up as a swimmer. Like I grew up competitively swimming ever since I was like six years old. My whole family were swimmers and it was just uh, something that we did. I was not very good right away. It took me a really long time to get at remotely decent, but I've always been captivated by like feats of swimming daring or <laughs> feats of swimming, like incredible feats of swimming, I was trying to say. Like someone who has, you know, swum across the English Channel or someone who has swum across, you know, from uh, Cuba all the way to the United States. I think that's been, I think that's happened. I know. Yeah, I think it's something like that's happened. But years ago, I remember hearing about this woman named Vicki Keith. Vicki Keith is the first person to ever have swum across all of the Great Lakes. And since I live here in Duluth on Lake Superior, the greatest of the Great Lakes, I just am fascinated by this. And in fact, I've heard of other people trying to swim across, particularly Lake Superior, because Lake Superior is in, it's very deadly, it's very dangerous, it's super cold, uh, the massive, massive waves at any given time. Even in the middle of the summer, the temperatures can be almost freezing. It, it's just, it's remarkable. And so this woman, Vicki Keith, in 1988, she swam across the Great Lakes. I heard about other people who had tried multiple times, five times, seven times, nine times, and never did it. You think though, sometimes, I get this back to this, like you think though with those people who tried and tried and tried and never did it, that, you know, if their training just went just right, and if the weather just cooperated with them just perfectly, you can imagine that someone who trained enough and worked hard enough, and, and again, things went their way, that ultimately they, they could, they could do it, right? It'd be a difficult thing, but it wouldn't be impossible to swim across Lake Superior. As Vicki Keith proved, she proved that it's not impossible. But I was thinking about this when it comes to the Christian life. And a lot of us look at what it is to be a disciple of Jesus, and we, we think of it like that. We think of it like, oh, it's like swimming across Lake Superior. Uh, you have to work really hard, you have to train a lot, and if, if things go your way and no one gets in your way, then you'll be able to do it. It's really tough, um, but you can do it. And I would say that uh, that's not what the Christian life is all about. In fact, the Christian life is, is, is not just difficult. The Christian life is impossible. What I mean by that is, is it's, it's possible. It's difficult to swim across Lake Superior. It is impossible to walk across Lake Superior in the, in the summertime. Sometimes it gets frozen over, but like it's impossible to walk on water. And yet, as Christians, that's what we're called to do. We're called to actually live the impossible. And I re I'm thinking about this, especially because there have been some people who've reached out to me and they've, they've said things like, listen, Father Mike, I, I listen to what you have to say. And for the most part, I, I, I like it. I'm, I'm grateful that you're doing the thing. But they said, sometimes you make it sound like it's so easy. They say, I, I, I can make it sound like, yeah, being a disciple of Jesus is actually just a piece of cake and it, it's, there's no problems and just, just do it, just do the thing. And I thought, wow, I, Maybe I do. I, I, I really actually did some introspection and kind of some, some evaluation of, do I make it sound like the Christian life is easy? Even worse, do I make it sound like the Christian life is difficult? Because ultimately we have to realize this, the Christian life, to be a true disciple of Jesus, it is, it's, not, <laughs> it's not difficult, it's impossible. And what you and I are asked to do is something that is beyond our, cap our capacities, beyond our capabilities. You and I are being asked to be like St. Peter, who sees Jesus walking on the water and Jesus says, okay, come and do what I do. Walk on water. We can't do that on our own. We 100% need God's grace. And so this is, this is the thing of like, just being able to look at my own heart and realize, oh, I don't have the, I don't have the abilities to follow after Jesus. I don't have the, the strength to follow after Jesus. I fail in following Christ on a regular basis. I, I, I struggle to follow Jesus on a regular basis. Even something as simple as this. You know, I, I'm a big advocate, big, big advocate for having a regular prayer life. And I do have a regular prayer life. But there are times when, you know, it's it's okay, it's a busy, you know, <laughs> I know it's the worst thing, but Sundays are kind of busy for priests. And so I have masses and confessions and I have marriage preps and I have other meetings with people on Sundays because that's a lot of days that people can meet on. And some, some Sundays, I get to the end of Sunday, I'm like, oh my goodness, I, I haven't taken time away just to be with the Lord. You're like, oh, Father, you fell once, you know, you, you struggled with that once in 365 days. Like, no, it's pretty regular Sunday occurrence where I'm like, everyone, have a regular prayer life. And here I am looking at myself. Why? Because I know it's true. And so that's why I'm saying like, this is what's true. This is what we're all striving for. This is all we all should be striving for. And at the same time, maybe I should be. I, maybe, it's, maybe it's a reality. Maybe I should share some more struggles, the ways in which I, I, I fail to live up to 
the call of Jesus Christ on a regular basis, one of the things that gets in our way is we see all the ways we've fallen and we get discouraged. We see all the ways that I'm not strong enough, all the ways that I'm not good enough, I'm not holy enough, I don't choose Jesus the way I should choose Jesus, and we get discouraged. As opposed to this, as opposed to saying, okay, Lord, here it is, another Sunday. And here I am at the end of the day, and all I can give you is just this little bit of time. But here's what I give you, that little bit of time. You know, come to another time where it's like, okay, God, here I am coming back to confession for the same thing over and over again. Gosh, Lord, I wish I was better. Okay, but the truth is, I'm not better yet. And so what I am, I give you. It, it's get, get to that place where you're so frustrated because it's like, man, I'm trying to be patient with people, trying to be giving to people. I'm like, oh man, my heart is so small. My heart is so shallow. My heart is so selfish. God, that's my heart. That's what it looks like. Okay, give him that heart that is selfish and that is shallow, that's broken, and it's not the way it should be. See, I think the reason why we sometimes get discouraged is because we don't realize that even God, God can even use our failures. God can even use those times like, I neglected to pray, I neglected to show up, I neglected to love, I neglected to be like you, Jesus. But when we come back to him, see, this is the thing. If I make Christianity sound easy, if I make following after Jesus sound easy, it is because of one thing and one thing only. And that is, I know that I can trust in the Lord. I know, I, that's it. I know I can trust him. Now, I don't trust myself. <laughs> this is really important. I don't trust myself because I know my brokenness. I know that I... I, I'm just like, there's this kind of a pseudo C.S. Lewis quote. I think he said something along the lines. I always quote him, but it's like a paraphrase of one of, it, one of his quotes where he basically says, um, Jesus, I have nothing more than a mercenary heart. Like, I know I have a mercenary heart because if sin offers like a, a momentary pleasure for me or, 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 or a kind of affirmation for me, like I could, I could choose that. But if Jesus offers me some consolation, I could choose that. If the moment offers me some, some rest where I don't have to like do the noble thing, I could choose that. But if the noble thing seems good, I could choose that. Like I can't trust my heart because I have a mercenary heart, but I can trust Jesus' merciful heart. That's the difference. I recognize I have a mercenary heart, but I know that Jesus has a merciful heart. And because of that, you and I don't need to ever be discouraged because I know my brokenness. I know that Jesus is asking me, to, asking me to do something that's impossible on my own. But I also know his grace. I also know his, his, his goodness. I also know that Jesus can take anything that you and I give him and make something incredible out of it. He can even take our brokenness, our selfishness, our shallowness. He can even take our sin. He can take our, our repeated like foolishness. He can take all of it and he can use it if we give it to him. And that's the key. So here we are. We find ourselves wherever you are, wherever you find yourself right now in this day, in this moment, you probably find yourself like me. Uh, not good enough, not strong enough, not holy enough, not, not loving enough. But we find ourselves with one choice. And that choice is, even though I'm not enough and I don't have enough and I don't do enough and I'm not good enough and I'm not holy enough, will I let Jesus be enough? Or will I trust in myself and just be discouraged? God can use your brokenness and my brokenness. He can use your failure and my failure. He can use our littleness and he can do something incredible with it. He's calling you out onto the water. He's calling me out onto the water. And it is not difficult. It is impossible. And that's why we just rely on his grace and we trust in his mercy and we walk in his love. And there's no need to ever be discouraged because I have a mercenary heart. But my Lord and God, Jesus Christ, has a merciful heart. Anyways, that's what I got today. For all of us here to Sense Presents, my name is Father Mike. God bless. <laughs>